Hey, everybody. Welcome to our inaugural edition of our Kids Win podcast. We really want to take advantage of all the great things happening in our district and being able to share that information with you through the ever, ever popular podcast now. Everyone loves to listen to a podcast, and we want to keep ours between 10 to 15 minutes. We want to focus on the great things going on with our students and our staff here in Woodford County Public Schools. We also wanted to have a little lightheartedness to go along with it because, hey, we are working with kids. So we're very excited about this inaugural podcast, and we want to make sure everyone's aware that the name of the podcast is Kids Win Podcast, and you'll be able to find it on any of your favorite streaming podcast services. So join us as we get to celebrate with our students and keep you abreast of all the great things going on in Woodford County Public Schools. The Kids Win Podcast. Hey, everybody. I'm here today on uh, the initial podcast with some of our wonderful agriculture students. And as you can tell behind us, we are in the ag uh, workshop. So I have Hunter Davis with me today and Wesley Sturgill. We're excited to get a chance to talk to them about a project they've been working on with the Kentucky Department of Education and a business located out of Lexington called Parker Hannafin. So we're going to start out by letting, allowing Hunter to give us a little information about himself, and then we'll move on to Wesley. Uh, my name is Hunter Davis. I'm a junior here at uh, WCHS, and I'm originally from upstate New York. Hello, my name is Wesley Sturgill. I'm also a junior here at WCHS, and uh, one thing about me is I like to fish. That's great. That's one of the things that, that uh, Wesley and I share, are the, the love of fishing. And uh, I had a chance to fish last summer up in uh, upstate New York. So, Hunter, I've, I've seen probably part of that country that you may be from. And it's, it's a beautiful area up there. We're excited to have these guys with us. They're going to tell us about this exciting project that we, we've we uh, kind of been lucky enough. We, we fell into this and it was offered to us. So tell us a little bit about what this project is. So basically, this project is... A company called Parker Hannifin, like you mentioned before, reached out to us and Berea Makerspace, and they challenged us with the task of making their, uh, number one, their work cell, and then number two, their facility more accessible, like having it a universal design, which means that anybody with any certain type of disability will be able to come and work into the workplace and be able to do their job without being held back by that disability. That's very, very interesting. Wesley, what 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 does do some of the disabilities that you guys may be preparing for? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, some of the main disabilities that we're trying to target and eliminate to uh, challenge people to come in the workplace is mostly physical. So, like if someone has or if someone is an amputee, or if they need a wheelchair to move, just kind of stuff like that, because you don't want to be sitting down all day reaching all the way forward as much as you can just to barely reach something in your workspace that you'll go to every single day. Yeah. So from what we can gather, this is a type of a competition. Can, can you explain that competition piece to us? Yeah. So Parker Hennepin reached out to our school as well as Bria Independent. And uh, what they're trying to do is challenge the students to kind of face against each other in a little friendly competition as to whoever can create the better design of a work cell and add more accommodations to universal design t towards their facility. So the winners of this competition after a final presentation that we will have in April is uh, going to be judged. I don't know that day or at a later date, but we will be judged and the winner of e either school will receive $30,000 put into their school fund, as well as a donation of the work cell, the winning work cell, that uh, that the students will design, donated to their school, so students will have an opportunity to become certified to go into the workforce for Parker Hannafin. And what that does is checks off the career or college ready box for them to be able to graduate. So let me get this straight. We've got an opportunity to win $30,000 to buy equipment, materials, those types of things. But we also have that opportunity to get the work sale, set it up, and help our students, not just this year, 
but years down the road to become career ready. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that, that, that's awesome. Of, and to add on what Wesley just said, Parker Hannifin also offers like um, jobs that like they'll help you pay for your college, but you will have to come back and work for them for a certain amount of years. So you will be able to get your college paid for by them if you come back and work for them. So it will offer students a better chance to like get like if they can't be able to pay, they can work for Parker Hannifin, get their college money and then graduate college, come back to Parker, work for them for a little bit, and then do whatever they want. Well, this sounds like an amazing opportunity, guys, for us to to really move our high school, not just this class, but our high school forward with career readiness. So it's, it's, it's a big undertaking, very exciting. Some of the problems, you talked a little bit earlier there about having to reach forward all the time. What are some of the problems you've had to solve while setting the project up or trying to define the work sale? Well, some of the issues that we have occurred with is, let's say somebody is has a prosthetic leg or something. Well, as of right now, they'll have to leave their workstation, walk across the factory floor, get a big box and take it back to their workstation. If they're at completely opposite corners of the inspection area, that's not going to be ideal for their workplace. It, it's not going to be as comfortable as they would like it to be. Because A, they have a prosthetic, and B, nobody really wants to carry big boxes all day to a work cell. So you guys have actually looked at the proximity of materials possibly needed then for that work or that individual or the job performance. And you want to locate that as close as possible, correct? Yes. So we was we were given a $5,000 budget for a bill of materials for different things, different resources we can acquire. That's going to help us in turn build our work cell and ultimately win this competition. Cool. I love the positivity. We're going to win this competition. Hunter, what was something that you kind of had to look at to try to help think of, you know, to, to, to think and move the project forward as to what we can do to help folks with, with uh, maybe a disability? Uh, to build on what Wesley said about people moving a lot. So basically there's a process. So after you get done sorting, you have to place all your O-rings into a bag and then bring it over to a scaling, uh, like a scale so you can weigh it and all sorts of other things. Then you have to go over to a printer, print out a label, and then bring it over to shipping or packaging. So what we were trying to do was just trying to make it all so it's all in one area. So it eliminates the cost of having to get up and it will increase productivity because you have everything that you need to do at just an arm reach away. So it will increase productivity time of regular employees and also also include people who are handicapped. So we're learning terms like productivity, uh, materials, work sales. These are things that we're all learning before ever going out into the workforce. Again, another great reason and a great opportunity for our students to work on this project. So as we move forward, we talked a little bit about or Hunter talked about Parker Hannifin. They make O-rings and they manufacture those O-rings. So it's an international company, not just here in Lexington, but it's uh, they have several different locations across the world. So they manufacture O-rings across the world. Have you had any chance to kind of look at some of the areas they may be located other than here in Lexington, Kentucky? Um, they do. I know they told us that because they're going to be completely remodeling that whole facility so they can implicate our ideas so it's more accessible so they do have a location down in tennessee that's where they're going to be moving like all their operations here in lexington down to tennessee to work there and one of their major sellers that they have is nasa they do make the o-rings that go into rocket ships and all other spacecraft that's amazing you know that's something that a lot of people may not know is that kentucky is one of the major exporters of the aeronautical uh space equipment so we do a lot of things here in, in kentucky that do go to nasa so that's exciting the team how was the team decided upon what's the makeup um, can you tell us a little bit about the team yeah so the team ultimately consists of the entire class however hunter and i are somewhat leaders of this project we do most of the work here and there of course, the entire class helps with ideas and contributes to everything else. Like some students have volunteered to help us on what we do. Of course, it's different materials that we work with and different stuff like trying to gather professionals to help us 
learn more about what disabilities we can become aware of or just stuff as far as ultimately working towards the end goal of the competition. However, the class has contributed in a ways that they have, they've seen what we've seen. So we're all on a, the same basis of just insight of the factory and the competition and the whole project overall. So just everybody on the same page working together now to try to win this competition. Yeah. Hunter, anything you want to add to the makeup of the team? I mean, was there a certain way the team was selected or is it just, okay, we're going to take this class and move forward with it? Um, I'm pretty sure because Parker reached out to Woodford County in general. I didn't reach out to the Ag Department, but Woodford County has selected the Ag Department to go along with this task because we have the most resources at as you may be able to see in the background here, we have this big open area that we can build it in. We have a lot of tools that we can utilize to help build our prototype and then our final design just so, yeah. And, you know, we had talked a little earlier about maybe some of the specialized equipment you've used to, uh, to help with either design or to build this work cell. Uh, anybody want to talk about that? Um, yes. So some of the resources that I use myself on my Chromebook, I use a 3D CAD program called Onshape. It's just, it's free to use and it's easy to use. It's very beginner friendly. Um, I've used that to create some 3D models and design some parts of the work. So, however, at home, I also use a more technical CAD program called Fusion 360 that's allowed me to create more than what I would normally be able to on a just to sit down really quick, sketch something out basis. Now, Wesley, for us, for us beginners and us novice, explain to us, can you explain to us what a CAD program is? So CAD program is just 3D designing. So it's more of an engineering kind of program. It's how you make a prototype on a screen rather than solving problems here and there, making a physical copy. You won't have to turn around and move this here you can just click a few buttons and this piece goes away and you can do something right here yep. now hunter you can then take that technical design and use it the dimensions and everything to build the actual work cell am i correct yes sir so what our plan is is well what we did do is we created it on wesley created it on his uh computer and we're just using that as like a template to know like what we need to buy, what we need to like, how we're gonna like sort of arrange it, everything so everything fits. And so like, and also provides us with things that we might be able to fix in it. Cause like, if we have like start sending things out on the desk, we can try to make it instead of being in a straight line, it can be curved towards the employee. So it'd be easier for them to grab everything. Okay, okay. So was there any other specialized equipment Hunter, that you can think of that you guys may not have used yet, but we'll have to uh, have to utilize here in the future to build the, the, the work cell. Um, we have an idea for a hydraulic system in the desk. So, you know how there's standing desks. We're trying to implicate that into our design. So it'll be easier for them to like say you have like a wheelchair. And so if you need to lower the desk so you can easily get under it or you need to lift it up because some wheelchairs are bigger than others. So basically, it's just trying to make it so people, no matter like what you have, you'll be able to work there. Gotcha. So, you know, that's a great idea because we see that a lot that folks, you know, you need to be able to adjust that desk for, for different people. So that's a great idea. Now, what we don't want to do is give away too many of our secrets, do we? Because we don't want Berea watching this thing, stealing some of our great ideas. So before we, before we wrap up, I'm going to have an either or session with you. And just one of you answer, and then the other one can answer. Okay? Rock or rap? I like classic rock. Classic, classic rock. rock. Uh, Skinner or uh, the Allman Brothers? I would choose Skinner. Allman Brothers. Allman Brothers. Oh, we got two experts here because, yeah, the Allman Brothers, both of them pretty good. So, uh, Fruity Pebbles, Captain Crunch. Fruity Pebbles. Fruity Pebbles. Mm. Peanut butter, chocolate. Peanut butter, all the way. Ooh. That's a hard one. I'll probably say peanut butter, yeah. Andy Griffith, Barney Five. 
Barney five. Barney five. Barney is a winner. I got two winners here. I got Mr. Wesley Sturgill. I got Mr. Hunter Davis. Pay attention to these guys because at some point you may need a job. And I got a feeling these two young men with the knowledge they have and just just the intelligence, the level of conversation we've had this morning, they're going to be the folks that you're going to need to turn to at some point. So, guys, we're very proud of the work you're doing. We're excited to have you on the initial podcast of Woodford County Public Schools. So you you may tell your grandchildren, Hunter, Wesley, that I was on the initial podcast. So that, that'll be something they'll you think they'll appreciate that? Well, if, if it's still going, then they might know what it is. I got you. I got you. So thank you guys very much. It's been a blast doing this with you. And I appreciate you playing along. appreciate you uh, answering questions and explaining the competition and the project to us. We're looking forward to that, Judge to the day that we get judged and we're looking forward to winning that competition, right? Absolutely. We are going to win. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the kids win podcast provided by Woodford County public schools. Join us next time as we showcase the talents of our amazing students here in Woodford County public schools where kids win.